Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Ah, I just got back from Japan. Uh, I was there for almost two weeks and it was amazing and I got so many downloads and the one that I'm excited to share with you today is all about dropping it. Oh, <laughs> just bumped my headphones. Dropping into our softness. So Japan is really, is really all about this. Like in everything that they do there, it's like making things beautiful, going slow, taking your time, being intentional, really like being soft. This is the energy with everything that happens there. And there is good things. There's good reasons for this. And there's things that are not so great about this, um, about the culture. Um, but for me, like where I was at in this very pivotal moment in my timeline, I really needed to be around the softness to see that there was parts of myself that I wasn't allowing myself to feel soft. In. And so, cause I mean, I've always, since, since I've started making podcasts, since you all have known me, um, I feel that I have really dropped into my softness as the feminine. And also, there is so much more to go. There is so much more pleasure to be had. And, <coughs> excuse me, because before I made these podcasts, like, it, you know, for 10 years after leaving my religion, the cult that I grew up in, no matter how good everything looked on the surface, like I had a travel company, I was traveling all over the world, you know, Instagram worthy locations, beautiful places, beautiful people. So everything looked good from a social media perspective. Uh, but even people who knew me, they were always like, well, Brittany, you're amazing. You're always creating these amazing things and la, 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 your life looks so amazing. And it was. And also on an, emu an emotional level, um, I was constantly feeling like I needed to run away. I was constantly feeling like in any situation that was happening like I was literally I've traveled to almost 70 countries and I've lived in a lot of them and there would always hit this moment where I was just like okay I need to move on you know like it's not safe here or or with a situation with a partner like someone I was dating um I was married for six years so I was married since I was 18 and then after that I was in pretty much monogamous primary partnerships for the next five years and then or maybe four years and then I started opening up my relationships but it, it was like this cycle of once a situation hit this certain depth of something inside of me I would find a reason to decide that it was time to move on <coughs> or that a person wasn't safe or you know, just in some way, it's not working. I got to go. Bye. But what I realized that this was me running away because for most of my childhood, I felt really unsafe and I wasn't able to run away. So I had to stay in a situation that was really unhealthy and very abusive. And that creates some trauma and some patterns. And I know that I create my timeline. I know that my inner beliefs create my external reality, you know, like draws things in vibrationally according to what I believe. I know all of this. And also, this is why we have shadow work. And shadow work is looking at the parts of yourselves that are you, you're hiding from yourself. It's making the unconscious conscious. And a lot of these parts are parts that we're not proud of. A lot of these parts are... And really... I wouldn't even say not proud. I would just say like they're not integrated parts of ourselves because as a whole complete individual, we wouldn't need to run away. We would be at home in our bodies, right? And we would be able to show up in any situation. And if the situation for whatever reason just wasn't working anymore, we would be able to speak up for that and in a healthy way move through it I was just running I was like going cold on people running away making dramatic exits all over the place um and I've healed this so 
I've healed this for the most part within my, um, within most of my relationships, within business, within friendships, within my community dynamic. <laughs> I have been through a lot of situations where I have had the opportunity to heal this and I've made a lot of mistakes. And also I do my best to own them, speak up for them, say sorry, all the things. Because that's what we're here for, right? We're here to learn and to grow. And I think that's really beautiful. And also the the one relationship that I still kept hitting this not being able to drop into my softness completely was in my primary partnership. So whoever I was dating, and it's, this is because multiple reasons. One, you're having sex with them. They're all up in each other's business, like energetically, physically, emotionally. And you share a life together. You're hanging out almost all the time. And you're going through life together in ways where you're reflecting back to each other a lot of things. And and so I I was in this moment in time with Faraday where I was like, something needs to change. And in the past, I would normally blame it on something external. And this time around, I have we have amazing couples counselors. We have a lot of, I'm doing my healing work, you know, we're always doing it. And there was just something intuitive in me that was like, I need to take space. I need to go away. Also, because I've been hosting tons of events here all high season and I love my community. And also, Mama Brittany needs to go away and have her own adventures. (laughs) Um, But I think there was, I knew, I could tell that there was something deeper in my psyche that needed to be explored. And I wasn't yet conscious of it, but I was just like, I have to go. And and specifically, I need to go to Japan. So this was all very funny for me. But I trust my intuition because this happens to me a lot. And it always unfolds. And I really invite all of you to trust your intuition because this is your higher self, your soul, the universe telling you, here's a little breadcrumb of what to do next. Follow it. And then we will show you all the amazing things. So if you trust that, amazing things unfold. So... um, Yeah, like... And I really want to honor that when I was a kid, there was actual things that were bad that happened. And this is what made my physical mind, you also call it your ego, create beliefs that I needed to protect myself. But what was happening in the future in my current timeline is that I was still had this very deep belief of not feeling safe. And then I would actually create that externally or I would look for reasons why it wasn't safe and there's two separate things there's one where it's like yeah you might actually be in an unsafe situation as an adult and sometimes that's because of the way we were raised and not having good boundaries and not understanding what's healthy and what's not I'm grateful to myself that I've done a lot of therapy I've done a lot of psychedelics I've done a lot of healing work so I understand this baseline and even when I had this baseline bug even when I had this baseline I still felt this this is when I knew that some it was something in me that I needed to look at because I would still have this deep feeling of anxiety and unsafety within my dynamic with Faraday and of course there's always something that we're growing on but this 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 was something deeper and I was owning it that that was something that I needed to look at um And I feel like this is actually something, especially, this is everyone in the world this applies to, but I feel like especially women that were raised in a society where we're programmed to believe that it's not, the worst thing we could do is let go of control. Like we need to fend for ourselves. We need to pay for ourselves. Like don't show vulnerability, which is emotions, which is the deepest form of authenticity. And as a woman, when we deny ourselves these parts of ourselves, which is really honestly this deep desire to unfold into our full softness, it's denying ourselves this part that really, really, really wants to come home into our bodies, into our psyches, with the people we love. It wants to come home into this present moment because when you're not able to feel safe, you're not actually here all the way. There's some part of you that's searching to make sure that it's safe, what to do, where's the exit, how do I get out of the situation? So you're not actually able to be fully aligned in your body and dropped in and fully enjoying the moment, which is literally all we have. All we have is time and all we have is these precious moments that are only going to be here 
once. <laughs> so we might as well make them as feeling good in our bodies as possible. Um, so this is all coming full circle to me going to Japan that ironically, this was the final thing that really needed to lock in for me, like this letting go, uh, this letting go into full trust and softness that everything is going to work out. Everything is going to be perfect. I'm always guided and protected by the universe, God, source, whatever you want to call it. There is something that has my back and I don't need to be on high alert all the time. And I will tell you that this is not, this is not for up until this moment in my timeline, this is not a normal state for me to be in. No matter how amazing I look on the outside on social media, internally up until this point, I've had a very hard time letting go of control and actually trusting that everything is going to work out. And this is what I mean by you can intellectually understand how the universe works, but the final step of waking up is allowing it to drop into your body, embodiment. That is the final step because then you're like in full alignment all the way through. Otherwise, something is going to be <laughs> mismatching and, and it's, you're going to get a lot of weird situations externally because your mind's saying one thing and your body's saying something different. So it's not going to work out in the way that you want. Um, and I felt, I feel like this is the final thing that I really need to do. This like dropping into my softness and this trust, this like deep, deep trust that everything's going to be okay. And I'm always taken care of in order for me to step into my full power. And that sounds like it doesn't go together. It sounds like it's actually the opposite because we're raised in a masculine driven society that you need to go take things. You need to go work for things. Everything has to be hard you know, you have to like push, but in reality, we all need to be balanced in our masculine and our feminine energy within our bodies. So it doesn't matter if you're a man, a woman, or non-binary, you all have masculine and feminine energy that needs to be balanced out in your body. And in our today's society, this has been really imbalanced within the feminine because we're programmed as children to be more in our masculine. Um, and this is so vulnerable, this softness to like really, really allow yourself to feel like you're coming home into your body and you're trusting the universe. This is, this is not up until now for most of us is not a natural state. Like we're, we're creating this and we're allowed to change our timelines whenever we want to. But I really want to honor that your ego, your physical mind might be telling you that what I'm saying to you is bullshit. And I'm telling you it's not because I have embodied this. I have gone through the timeline. I'm coming out the other side. And it really, really, really does work. Um, because it's also like we all want to come home <coughs> to the softness that's in our bodies and this vulnerability and, and this is everyone, right? But I, when I imagine like a woman who's allowing herself to go into her softness, I, f I imagine this flower that is just like, you know, kind of constricted and it's like asking, is it safe? Is it safe to unfold? Is it safe to bloom? And when they really allow themselves to unfold and be in their softness, they bloom into this beautiful, beautiful flower that everyone wants to support and admire and appreciate, you know? Like, it's like everyone has your back. Everyone is, is protecting you when you're in this state. Um, and again, I know it sounds like a conflict because we're raised in this society that's telling us to do the opposite, to take care of ourselves, to do everything for ourselves. But when you really allow yourself to unfold and be in complete trust, then that's when you actually expand outward and grow into your full power. Like I imagine like the DNA spiral, like just spiraling outward, which is also the Fibonacci sequence, which is also the sequence of life. So many things I could say about that, but like imagine just this energy spiral coming out of you, like from your chakras through the top of your head and spiraling out and expanding. This is what we do when we are in alignment between our masculine and our feminine sides. 
And it's so beautiful. This is what we all crave. And a lot of times we try and like, so if I'm a woman, I try and get a man, my partner to fill this masculine side, to make me feel like I'm safe. So then I can completely unfold. And I do believe that they are there to support that and to and be this foundation for us as women, but we have to heal it within ourselves first. And how do we do this? <laughs> um, so this you can do this in, in any, any energy that you need to balance out. You can think of it like this, but I'm going to speak for myself and what I needed. So as a woman and me having trauma with men in childhood, I really needed to balance out and reconnect with my inner masculine. Um, so that I could trust men in this timeline. Um, so I had this deep belief, like very, very deep down, uh, that I feel like I've actually, I had buried because I thought I had healed it, <laughs> um, uh, that men were unsafe. And so what helped me was to literally when I meditate, like imagine the universe as this masculine energy, as this protector this provider this beautiful yummy energy that just wants to show up for me and love me and do whatever is needed to support me so that I can unfold and I can just like lean back into this energy and feel so safe like it's like wrapped around me like a blanket and if you need to heal this with your feminine side you can do the opposite you can imagine the universe or God as a feminine energy and do the exact same thing so when I did this, it helped me to heal so, like, it's kind of hard to put into words how much has shifted for me in the last two weeks, especially in the last two days since I've come home and integrated and been through a lot of situations with Faraday. Um, but I will say that I feel that any time that this part of me wants to tell me that Faraday's not safe or that a certain man's... I'm going to talk about Faraday because I'm going through some stuff with him. That Faraday is not safe. What I do is I connect to my inner masculine. So I imagine that God or the universe is this masculine, big, powerful energy that is so gentle and protective and just wants to be there for me and show up for me. And I immediately take a deep breath and I feel okay because I know that no matter what happens between Faraday and I, I am always guided and supported. And the ironic thing is that when I'm in that energy, then that's when it gets reflected outward because I'm in this trust. I'm in this softness as my feminine. That gets reflected outward, that energy to Faraday. And then he comes back and actually reflects this inner masculine that I have been meditating on and that I'm connecting to this energy. This is what energy work is and it is real. Okay. I'm telling you it is very real. And if you haven't already figured out, we are all just energy vibrating fast enough to create matter. But in general, this is how it works in the universe. And it's just, it's like, I could say so much about this, but what I really want to say is that I, I feel like especially as a woman, this is this is such a this is such a a big thing for me because also what I was doing on the flip side was when I wasn't relying on my inner masculine or you know source energy or the universe as the my masculine that was protecting me, I was um, sometimes trying to have Faraday like take care of me as if he was my dad and this is not in like an unsexy way it was more like I was having him make decisions that actually I needed to make and I think there's something really beautiful about letting your man lead and really trusting him because when you give him this trust this is when a man a boy becomes a man because they want to fulfill this um, for their partner so there is that, that, like that is also me dropping into my softness and being like, I trust you. And there is also, this is what my needs are and these are non-negotiable. So that is the balance between you honoring and having your inner masculine speak up within the dynamic 
And then after you do that, dropping into the softness and being like, you know what? I trust you. I trust that you will make decisions that are good for our relationship. I trust that you will protect my heart. I trust you and I'm here and I'm leaning in. Like in the past, I would emotionally run away before we would even get to this point. So I would be having a conversation with someone and emotionally I'm already out the door, like ready to like be like, bye, peace out. And I could feel me wanting to do this in many different ways in my relationship with Friday over the last year and a half that we've been dating. And intuitively, I've been leaning in more. But this this time around has been a very, very, very conscious leaning in and a very conscious being in my needs and speaking my needs and being soft and speaking my needs because when you know what your needs are and when you know what your non-negotiables are and you speak them there's really no reason to fight or get angry because (laughs) it's either like the person sees you and respects you and what you need and honors it or they don't and if they don't it's okay that's their decision they have to make their decisions you you cannot control you cannot manipulate them I mean you can try but it's not going to work in the end because everything is energy and people can feel when you're trying to do this so even if consciously they're not aware of it they will not like you and not want to hang out with you or they'll rebel against it in some way but when you're really like in your balance like masculine and feminine energy so like the masculine is speaking your needs and holding to what you need and your boundaries and making sure they're honored And the feminine side is the softness. It is the trust in the situation that it's all going to work out. It's the trust in the people that you love. Because I've looked back on so many of my relationships now that I'm more aware of what, who I am and what's going on. And I've realized that like so many amazing men that I've dated actually really wanted to show up for me. And I wasn't able to trust them. I wasn't able to really drop in and allow them to lead and like take care of me like energetically emotionally and sometimes physically you know like just this is what the masculine wants to do and we as the feminine all we really need to do is like appreciate it see it admire it and and do what we can to expand it you know like when you are supported by the masculine energy and they really are showing up for you this is when the feminine can fully drop into their power and just unlimited amounts of abundance, unlimited amounts of yummy energy happening. It's all good things. If we allow ourselves to trust that it's safe to drop in. (sighs) There's so much more I could say about this, but I'm excited to take my dog to the beach with one of my best friends and her dog. Um, So I will leave it here. And I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will see you very soon on the next podcast. Bye.